Hi everyone and welcome to 2021. I do hope you are safe. My name is Rob Scott and I'm based in Sydney and today I want to show you how to build your own scrollable container box using the Squirrel 365 platform. Squirrel comes with some great standard menu listing features like you see on my screen. For example, the scrollable list box on the left, the list builder in the middle and the label menu on the right hand side. And I'm sure you'll find lots of opportunity to use those. However, you may find that you have a more complex requirement in building a list that is contained to a certain size and you need it to scroll, as well as having more than the standard features that you see in these options. So I've created one and here's my scrolling container box. It has 10 rows and on the rows there are different elements. So for example, I have a checkbox or a drop down and some buttons and the Thing scrolls like that, which is really handy in particular use cases. So let me take you through how I built this. Um, it's actually not difficult at all and quite easy to replicate. So the first thing to let you know is I've used the standard container as the underlying feature for this. Now technically you don't need to use a container, you could recreate this without that, but the beauty of containers is that they retain the relative position of the items inside the container when you move it around. So I've used that as the base. Um, the second thing is that the items that you see in here in the container, um, uh, for example the colored lines to give an effect um, of, of lines in the container are just blocks which are colored differently and then each of the items um, are individual features that you will be familiar with in terms of the tool. The big thing is all about synchronization so every item within this container needs to be synced to one particular movement and that's this scroll bar. Now there is no scroll bar per se but what I've used instead is the standard control called the slider and I've reconstructed it just to make it look uh, blank at the back, taken out all the text and just use the normal um, standard features that it, that it comes with. So what's important is that I first of all identify a value block on my spreadsheet so that's my C2 and I've also set a minimum and a maximum value which you can see here in A2 and B2. And my minimum value is actually a minus number, in this case, minus 120. And the reason for that is that the standard way in terms of which the um, scroll bar works is that if I used a positive number, it would look like it was going in reverse. In other words, my block would start at the bottom and I'd have to push upwards in order for it to scroll down. So we start with a minus number to essentially reverse the action. The most important thing to get right is the top line. So each item on the top line needs to um, be correct and then everything else will follow from that. So let me show you what I mean. So if we look at the back background block, um, the Y position is the variable for all these activities and each, each item's Y position is the variable co component. So in this case, I've linked it to G3 and if I look at G3, you'll see that the formula is five, which is the initial relative position of where the block started. And I'm adding in C2, which is the value that will be created when I start moving the scroll bar. And that goes for each of the top items or each of the items in this top row. Now you might wonder why I don't just have one um, row in my spreadsheet or one column in my spreadsheet um, with using the same numbers. The reason is that the different objects like an item and a, and, and a checkbox are actually sized differently. So the starting point or the starting pixel would be different. So making sure that we get our top row um, perfectly aligned is important. And then if we look at the second row, so let's have a look at this checkbox in uh, in row two, it's assigned to um, I4 and I4 is essentially saying that it's a total of I3 which is the first row score plus B3 which is the gap and that's a standard um, gap for all objects. And what that really does is allow you to have a consistent uh, spacing between all your features. So for example if I did change this to 50 you would see that it'll, it'll expand and move everything in the proportional way. 
Okay, so I'll move it back to 43. So the idea is that once you have your first row sorted out, your second and subsequent rows are just leveraged off the previous number. Um, and if you go down to, for example, um, the, the third the third one, you'll see it's exactly the same. It's I4, so it's the one before it plus the gap of B3. And all of these things are ultimately linked back to this scrolling or scroll bar value. So whenever that value changes, all these numbers increase and decrease. So if I play that again, you'll see that as I'm scrolling down, you will see that this scroll bar value is decreasing because it's a, it's a negative number. And that's then adding to the numbers that you see here and therefore pushing the Y value up. In other words, you create the impression that they are moving up or, then, or moving down. So it's, it's a, a really a simple thing to recreate and it's really handy to be able to use a tool like this. A couple of um, tricks just to that you know that once you have um, finished building it, you should put a, a border around the edging of, of the box. Otherwise, you'll create a slight um, visual spillover um, as you're scrolling up and down um, over and above the, um, the container box. So put a, a small colored line around it and that creates a nice sort of edging to, to the tool. And that's it. It's otherwise a very simple thing to use. I hope you have fun recreating and building this and good luck in your developments.